In this video, we will take a look at how to write the program for the bubble sort algorithm. So, let's start by defining the function. My function will take in an array as an input and return the sorted array. For this example, I am taking the array as integer type. I'm going to store the length of my array in a variable called n. So now let's see what are we actually doing in bubble sort. We are taking the greatest element and shifting it to the last index. Then we take the second greatest element and shift it to the last index but 1. So like this, what we are doing is, starting from the end, we are taking the indexes one by one and putting the correct element in those indexes. We start with the greatest element, then the second greatest element, and so on. So which are the indexes we are filling with the correct element? We first fill in the last index, then the last index but 1, and so on. We keep doing this until we reach index number 1. Now, the very first index is the 0th index. We don't need to explicitly put the correct variable in the 0th index because we believe that if we put all but one elements in their correct positions, that last element will also automatically come to the correct position. So, Let's create a loop to represent which are the indexes we are filling in with the correct elements. So the first index we fill with the correct element is the last index. The last index can be represented by n minus 1. So for an array of 5 elements, n will equal to 5. The last index will be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 will be the last index, so which is n minus 1. So we start by filling the very last index with the correct element. Where do we stop? We stop at index number 1. We don't go all the way till the 0th index. We stop at index number 1. Each time we are going to decrement i. So from the end of the array we are going to go all the way till index number 1. Each time we fill it with the correct element. So how are we putting the correct element at the last index each time? What we are doing is we are going to go from the 0th index all the way till the index we want to fill. Each time we are going to check whether in a particular pair of elements the greater element is coming to the left of the lesser element. In such a case, we want to swap. So, we are taking a look at these kind of pairs all the way till the index we want to fill. So, I need to keep a loop from zero all the way till the index I want to fill, which is going to be i. This is going to be the range in which I am going to shift the largest element to the end. So each time the range will change. In the beginning I will take all the elements, then for the next index I will take all the elements but one and so on. Each time I am going to shift the largest element to the end of this range. As you can see, I have given j as strictly less than i. So I am going to stop checking the pairs one less than the actual end of the range. This is because the pair I will be checking is going to be j and j plus 1. So what to pair am I checking? I am checking j and 
j plus 1. So finally when I come to a value 1 less than the range end, I will be checking that and the actual range end when I do j plus 1. So what am I checking? This is going to be the preceding element and this is going to be the succeeding element. I want that in a pair the element which precedes the other should be the lesser element. So if array of j is going to precede array of j plus 1, I want array of j to be less than array of j plus 1. If it is not and if array of j is going to be greater than array of j plus 1, then I wish to swap the elements. So I am going to swap using a temporary variable. So this is a basic swapping using a temporary variable. Temp is equal to array of j. Array of j is equal to array of j plus 1. And array of j plus 1 is equal to temp. So whenever we check our pairs and in the pair if a lesser element comes to the left of a greater element we leave it as it is but if the pair is going to be a greater element and then a lesser element then we want to swap. After we do this we have come to the end of our j loop and thereby the end of our i loop. After we are out of our i loop we can return the array because now the array has been sorted. So let's go over it once more. We are going to fill in the indexes of the array with the correct elements from the last index. So first we will fill in index n-1, then we will fill in index n-2 all the way till we fill the index 1 with the correct element. Automatically index 0 will also be filled with the correct element. So inside the i loop this element should be in its correct position and then we go to the next one. So how are we putting the correct element in the correct position? That's where the J loop comes in. Each time we are going to shift the largest element in our range to the end of the range. So the range always starts from 0 and always ends at the position we want to fill. First time the position we want to fill is n minus 1. Second time when i is n minus 2 we want to fill the position n minus 2 and so on. That's why we go from 0 all the way till i in which we will fill the correct element. Now the two elements which we will be comparing as pairs will be j and j plus 1. First we will compare the 0th element with the first element. Then we will compare first with second. Then second with third. All the way till we come to the last but 1 which is where the j loop ends and the actual last element of our range. So what are we comparing? We are checking whether in a pair if a greater element is going to come before a lesser element. So if that happens we don't want this kind of arrangement and we will swap these two elements. We keep swapping and swapping until the largest element reaches the end of the range. That is reaches the position we wish to fill. In such a case, we say that that position has been correctly filled, we can get out of the J loop and we can go to the next element we want to search or we want to fill. That goes to the next increment of the I loop. Now I loop keeps incrementing until all the indexes are filled with the correct elements up till the um, at index number 1, then index number 0 will automatically be filled after that all the indexes have been filled with the correct elements and we can return the array. This is how you write the program for bubble sort.